Here I have the vector equilibrium again. It was made with the wires and the uh, Q-tips, but the wires were making it hard for me to handle it and just play around with it. So I wrapped it in some fuzzy pipe cleaners, the white ones. And now it's real easy to hold and play around with better. I think it's important to get kind of an intimate feel and grasp of something to learn its secrets. And I was thinking of this vector equilibrium, how it's made with really, actually it's just eight tetrahedrons. The six squares that it make are the result of the eight tetrahedrons coming together in a particular way. So they're really only formed by the eight tetrahedrons. They're not formed by six uh, squares representing the uh, octahedron cut in half. They're formed alone by the tetrahedron, which I have heard it called the building block of life. I was reading something somewhere where it said about the tetrahedron that when our quantum physicists look at the tiniest thing, which is a photon of light, the shape of it is the tetrahedron. And this is what we're all made of, from a person to a blade of grass or a stone. And these tetrahedrons represent love, which is the cohesive force that keeps everything together, that makes creation even possible. And it comes direct from this God place, which is represented by the vector equilibrium. And this is also in many of the plutonic solids that I have found so far. I suspect it's in all of them. But let me show you the ones I've found it in. So here I have the vector equilibrium inside of a square. And I wanted to use another medium besides clay because that was so heavy. So I made some paper mache the other day and I put it over the vector equilibrium that, that is inside of this square. I'm going to see how hard that will dry. And if You can notice about this form when I push the vector equilibrium in in the middle. And here I was attempting to put paper mache on this cup, chalice cup that I call this. But you notice that if you cut this in the middle and put the two uh, square ends together, you would have the octahedron again. So it's remarkable to me that the octahedron is inside of the Merkaba, and the octahedron is something that makes another Merkaba if you add to it. And the tetrahedron and the octahedron and the Merkaba, and all of this is so closely tied together and sort of interchangeable, and one makes the other, and the other makes the other. It's, it's kind of interesting. And here's another interesting thing I've done. You see the little chalice. I have made it again. And I took the top part and added the four points, which, the, which make it the bottom half of a Merkaba. And then I made another half of the Merkaba and set it on top, which is like the chalice is holding the Merkaba. And that is perhaps important. This is the first vector equilibrium that I ever made. I made it very large and heavy with clay. But in this one, I put the inside as a center that a vector, I guess, what do you call that? It's, it, all of the Q-tips <laughs> go to every point, which there are 12 of them, out from the center. So this is like power being given to 12 places inside of this vector equilibrium, which to me represents God. And maybe this is like God sending out 12 powerful rays from himself. Now with this one, I was just playing around with the vector equilibrium again. Only this time I decided to bring the Q-tips out from each of the eight um, tetrahedrons to a point. So it made an eight-pointed little star around the vector equilibrium. 
Then I, the white Q-tips that are not covered with floral tape that you see on the top there, they turn into another Merkaba. A Merkaba on top of an eight-pointed star thing that's on top of a, of a vector equilibrium. So I thought, well, this is interesting. It has six sides, so I'll make, uh, make all of them. But I only made four because, and this is what it looks like. There's four Merkabas built upon that, that, and so I left it that way. And I didn't put the one in the front and in the back because I just didn't feel like I wanted to do that. I like the way it looks with that center square. But see, everything, using these same lengths, and these same patterns turns into more and more Merkabas. They just are everywhere. I made Merkabas out of... So I'm making a lot of Merkabas in strange ways. Uh, there's another video on my site making a Merkaba out of the paper I fold into the dove. I take four pieces of paper, but you'll have to look at the videos to see how this is done. But when you uh, use just four pieces of paper folded a certain way, you will get that paper put together in such a way that it makes the Merkaba again. I don't, it, the Merkaba just keeps coming to me in various ways of making it with geometry that I only know by doing it. I don't know by looking at the mathematics of it. I only know it by actually holding it in my hand and folding or putting q-tips together or something like that. But it's all still something that can be represented mathematically, though I don't know how you do that. But I think this is very interesting and maybe, maybe someone will understand the mathematical equations of it and maybe that speaks to them in some kind of way. These are just a few of the little things I make out of clay and paper the paper in the middle there, that, uh, that is made with 36 square pieces of paper folded. And the folds of each of these pieces of paper, if I took it to its completion, would, would make a dove. Only some people that do origami call it the crane. And when I learned to make the crane, I wanted so bad to remember all the steps for folding that I took all the steps and put them into a book. Each step on a different page was pasted, was uh, taped in there. One day when I took the, the book out because I wanted to fold the crane again, Spirit talked to me through automatic writing and out of me came this dove story where I wrote on each page that had a little step of the folding of the crane a beautiful story that I could never have put together on my own, but it came from spirit and it's a beautiful story. I, I tell it on my website, on, on this channel. It's called The Dove Story. You might want to look at it. It's made with these shapes and the shapes of which four of them unfolded and put together a different sort of way when it's at that stage that makes that thing in the middle that's yellow and green there. Well, you can make another Merkaba. Now I remember why I didn't want to add the other two Merkabas to this. I just wanted the four. Because when you look down the middle, you see that square. Right in the middle, you see all the way through it. You can stick your arm right through this. Well, to me, this is like the place of the Holy of Holies. On the other side of that square, imagine a mirror. I'm, I think I'm going to find a mirror and put it there. And imagine on the front side of it, a curtain ripped in half, folded back for you to see where God lives and who God is. So you look through into the vector equilibrium. You're looking right in the middle, the center point, the zero point, and what face you see is yourself. And you're seeing into the Holy of Holies when you look through there. And you learn that you are God when you know that you are God. And as Eckhart Tolle said in one of his videos, evolve or die. We have to evolve to the place where we know who God is, that God is us, and that our words and our thoughts and our actions are creating our reality.